welcome to the Wild Gut Project. My name is Carrie. Um, today's video is all about glucose. Not glucose, fructose. I'm going to mix that up a lot. I recently did the, um, the fructose challenge as part of the low FODMAP diet and discovered I don't tolerate it so well, which was a surprise to me, but it shouldn't have been, so I looked into it. And actually, 45% of people that experience IBS also don't absorb or tolerate um, fructose very well either. So fructose is a single um, sugar molecule. It either comes in free form, so free fructose, yeah, hard to say, or it comes um, kind of paired up often with glucose, and that's what sucrose is. It's a glucose and a fructose put together. And it can come in um, chains, or sometimes short chains, oligos if you will, and that's called a fructan, or, um, which is you know, another FODMAP. So the issue with fructose, and it's free fructose, so that's fructose without glucose, is that it doesn't get absorbed very easily into your gut. So you have two transport systems in the kind of membrane of your small intestine. So food comes into your stomach, then it comes into your small intestine, and that's where most stuff is absorbed into your blood. Um, so we have a transporter called uh, GLUT5, and that just does fructose, but not very well. And then you have GLUT2, which does transport fructose very well, but it has to come along with a glucose molecule. So as long as you have the same amount of glucose as you do fructose, they can pair up and they can get entry into your blood and get used or whatever, and you're okay. But if, for example, your GLUT5 receptor isn't um, transporter isn't working so well, when there's an excess of fructose compared to glucose, it's left hanging about and it moves on down into your large intestine or your colon where bacteria go goody and ferment it and produce um, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, methane, short chain fatty acids and those all lead to those really lovely symptoms of IBS, so you've got cramps, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, um, wonderful things. So hopefully that explains why it's not fructose in itself, it's fructose in excess of glucose. And that brings us on to the list of foods that I'm not going to be able to um, eat anytime soon and maybe you might have to limit to. Um, I know I learn things way better if someone tells me, which is why I wanted to kind of give you this list with some pictures um, of the foods, just so you don't have to like keep checking the app or keep checking your book. Right, it's not too bad. Brace yourself. Fruits. First things you can't have are mangoes, watermelons, apples, apart from a small amount of Granny Smith apples if you're okay with polyols. Wasting berries, cherries, figs. Um, interestingly, you can not have guava if it's unripe, but if it's ripe, it's all good. It's low FODMAP. You can have a whole one. Knock yourself out. Pears, no pears, they're also high in polyols, I think. Um, you can have prickly pears, but that's like a completely different fruit with the same name for some reason. Tamarillo, or tamarillo, I don't know. Is it pretentious to say a yeah instead of a la? And then kind of processed fruit goods. The first one is basically no fruit juice, none of that, all too high in fructose. You can have cranberry juice, which is a bit random. Kind of a shame, it's like the least nice fruit juice. Okay, sultanas. I don't like sultanas, so I don't mind. Um, blueberry jam, and then um, on the app it said fruit bars. All I can think of with this is like those Twizzlers you used to get when you were like in middle school. They were really popular. Otherwise, I don't know. If you see a bar of fruit, don't eat it. Okay, sweeteners and syrups. No agave, um, nectar syrup. No honey. So if you're like strict vegan, that's not really an issue anyway. Um, high fructose corn syrup which might be tricky if you live somewhere like America where they like to put in everything um, and finally molasses and then vegetables vegetables that are high in fructose Jerusalem artichokes asparagus sugar snap peas broad beans lotus root for some reason it just says dried um, not just on its own so I guess that's how you get it more than two sun-dried tomatoes I know I definitely tolerate one or two absolutely fine and they're amazing for adding savoury flavour without onion and garlic, so see how you go. Basically, you can't have artichokes, um, 
You can't have more than one half of a heart, which is kind of hardly anything. So I just wanted to show you the, um, the Monash app because it has this useful filtering system. Because to be honest, like, I'm starting to remember it. It's been a few days, um, but that list is definitely going to take a while to sink in. So in the meantime, it's really handy to have this app and you can just double check against your kind of level of um, tolerance. So yeah, those are some foods to watch out for. Um, oh, I found a really random tip about it. Apparently, if you exercise directly after eating something with fructose in, it um, basically makes it way worse. The fructose has less of a chance to be absorbed and get straight to your colon and the bacteria start causing all the damage. Um, so basically, don't eat a mango and go to a Zumba class is, is the moral of this video. So let me know if you also, like me, have some issues with fructose. And, oh, okay. I was thinking about it, there's still a lot of fruit you can enjoy that isn't high in fructose, so it's not like all fruit is out of the picture. You can still have strawberries or kiwis, so um, maybe let me know what your favourite low FODMAP or low fructose fruit is in the comments below. Right, so I hope that was helpful. I hope it wasn't too depressing as well if you're, um, you're not so good with fructose either. And I will uh, see you in my next video. Bye!